for centuries and served as a necessary means of transportation in many snowbound areas of the world. It was fun to ride the horse-drawn cutter, to feel the tingle of snowflakes on your face, to hear the trotting beat of hoofs and sleigh bells. But with the invention of the engine, the raw horsepower was soon replaced. As man and machine progressed in many areas of moving vehicles, some put their genius to use in developing different modes of transportation, conventional and otherwise. While few worked on the mechanization of the sleigh, necessity being the mother of invention, many innovations came to be. Some with the use of existing machines. And not without the usual trials and tribulations did creative inventors, determined to succeed, develop a dependable, snow-worthy vehicle. What started out as a necessary means of getting through became the versatile snowmobile of today and tomorrow. And indeed, it has replaced the horse. snowmobiling has just finished its first full decade of phenomenal success. In the early 60s, there were only a handful of machines around, with an equally small number of enthusiasts. But the 60s brought more leisure time to more Americans than ever before, and the recreational possibilities of these red-hot little machines quickly caught on. recreation and sports-minded consumer in the heavy snow areas of our continent suddenly discovered a sled that could go not only down a hill, but up a hill as well. So popular has the machine become in this short span of time that today there are more than two million snowmobiles in operation. This motorized sleigh, used in the past only by explorers and adventurers of the far north, 
has become the family fun machine. From family outings, to safaris, to daily chores like shopping, it's replaced the second car in snow country and is a handy workhorse. In many small towns, mom does her errands by snowmobile. travel has proven the machine's worth. There are explorers who found the snowmobile a new challenge in setting records in long distance travel to the North Pole. From coast to coast, and maybe even from continent to continent, new doors to adventure. Popularity may be due at least partially to its simplicity of operation. Equipped with steering skis, cycle type handlebars, and moved by an endless track on spring suspension systems allowing the vehicle to float over snow at cruising speeds that exceed 60 miles an hour. Powered mostly by two cycle engines. There's a style and a price for everyone. From mini machines to exotic and sophisticated models, almost like a car. To operate, merely turn the key, pull the starter cord, or use the electric start which most manufacturers offer. The manufacturers with foresight, realizing the coming trend, were quick to offer customers the product they sought, snowmobiles. There are more than 40 United States and Canadian manufacturers that roll out the new models each year with streamlined styling and constant innovations, as sophisticated as the automobile industry, to attract and please the eager customer was just shivering to explore the wonderful winter wilderness. From the wild Allagash region of northern Maine to California's Rocky Sierra, snowmobiles are everywhere. In many of the predominantly snowbound areas of the north, snowmobiling has changed the economic outlook Hundreds of towns and villages laid dormant, without activity during previous winters. Residents and businessmen alike boarded up their homes, shops and resorts to hibernate or to escape to warmer climates. Thank <laughs> you. 
Today, the same towns sparkle with a new outlook on life. In many of town, snowmobiles have taken over Main Street. For parking a snowmobile seems easier than parking a car. A joyous mood prevails, even for this black Labrador retriever. And of course, cash registers sing a merry tune during the coldest months that used to see empty streets and stores. Snowmobiling has created a new breed of outdoor enthusiast. One can expect to get stuck once in a while, and turning the machine around in snow three feet deep isn't exactly an easy task. These snowmobilers ignore the thermometer, which often drops to points of 20 below zero or even better. Of course, with clothing and headgear especially designed for the sport, which has become a thriving industry in itself, even the most cold-fearing person can stay warm and snug. Snowmobile clubs have mushroomed everywhere and are the in thing in snow country. And if it's fun to do by yourself, it's even more fun in a group. There are now more than 2,000 snowmobile clubs in the United States and Canada. Many of them boast of as many as 250 members. The avid snowmobiler thrives on weekly trail rides, family, group, or club outings into the wilderness, on trails especially made and provided for the machines. Trails are broken by individuals, by clubs, state or county forestry departments, and extend for miles through public, state, and county forests, as well as private lands where permission has been granted. Nicolay National Forest in northern Wisconsin is the perfect setting for a typical weekend trail ride with its breathtaking scenic winter beauty and its virgin timber and hidden lakes. Single file, machines float along, slowly enough to enjoy the surroundings, yet fast enough to make the gentle slopes of the trail thrilling. Snowmobiling has made winter activities as pleasurable as summer outings. Picnics are a favorite among the trail riders. Amid scenic surroundings, this marks the halfway point before the long ride home. Tavern hopping is a popular weekly pastime, 
many country and backwoods trails begin or end at the local pub. Occasionally, there will be a few along the way. But most of the celebrating is done after a long, exuberating trail ride, which can often mean a trip of up to 100 miles. But that's no effort for a true snowgoer. Again, at the conclusion of the ride, there's a campfire to fight off the chills of the cold winter's night. the end of the trail ride means the warm indoors. A hot meal is a welcome treat after the below freezing temperatures of a snowmobile ride. Rigorous outdoor activity can sure create a healthy appetite get-togethers among friends, neighbors, and club members are all part of snowmobiling. Now, these folks talk about something they have in common, snow fun. Uh, oops, uh, yes, even the littlest snowgoer gets into the act. some real action, like racing the machines across the vast expanse of snow-covered lakes at 60 miles an hour, jump gentle slopes and snow drifts, and with a little luck, fly 50 feet through the air, uh, sometimes landing a little too hard. Now the snow may seem soft, but these stunts are definitely not recommended for beginners. While snowmobiles are a great source of fun, they also serve many practical purposes. This doesn't seem very practical, especially when the thermometer drops to 20 below zero. But there are those hardy types who will actually do this, rather than rolling in the snow after an old-fashioned sauna bath. a recreational vehicle with close to two million users. It should also be recognized as a useful vehicle in a multitude of ways in snow country. Law enforcement agencies use the machine for rescue. conservation departments find the machines the only practical way of reaching and checking deer herds, sometimes isolated and starving because of heavy snowfall.
ranchers can reach remote cattle herds to supply their feed. Daily chores on the farm are made easier. Snow like this makes any hunting extremely difficult. Hunters now use the machines to get close to where they're at and transport that trophy buck back in motorized fashion. And fishermen find it easy to transport their equipment by snowmobile to far out lakes where they're really biting. Winter activities have been made easier for many and made possible things that couldn't have been done at all before without those red hot little machines. Together with this phenomenal growth and success, snowmobiling also has its problems, small and big, ranging from minor mishaps to national controversy. In the early days of snowmobiling, machines were built to go an average of 30 or 40 miles an hour. Today, however, machines are built and sold to the public that do exceed speeds of 70 miles an hour. Heading the list of problems, some of which are demonstrated here, that have become a major concern are accidents caused by speeding or driving through unfamiliar areas. Collisions with fixed objects, obstructions hidden by deep snow. Daredevil attitudes are risky and dangerous. Kids can get hurt on a sled improperly towed. And there are drownings and collisions. Barbed wire fences, hard to see from a speeding snowmobile, are a real menace. But they're there for a purpose. Landowners will continue to complain about trespassing until less considerate snowmobilers wise up or regulations spoil trail riding for everybody. In Minnesota, a chicken farmer reported that snowmobilers roared through his property, crushing 209 of his egg-laying birds. His loss was almost $2,000. But according to newspaper accounts, the small print in his insurance policy read, You lose, pal. Mailboxes are targets for unscrupulous users of machines, too. And so are tree plantations and, of course, wildlife. In numerous instances, snowmobiles have been used to chase herds of deer, as well as many other wild animals, to exhaustion and hunt them down. Another concern is pollution and its effects on wildlife. Snowmobiles can take man where he's never been before in winter. 
Winter wonderlands, once serene, silent and remote, provide shelter for hundreds of species of animals. Some conservationists fear that noise pollution cannot be tolerated by some of these animals during their breeding cycle. The machines also take their exhaust fumes into the last outpost of our wilderness. Up till now, snowmobiles have been classified as recreational vehicles, and the licensing of drivers has not yet been required in most states. Consequently, there are few lower age limits on drivers. If you can just barely see over the handlebars, you can drive a snowmobile. continues to grow as a means of transportation and recreation. It's become competitive too. From small town challenges arose the present day derby. And today the chills and the thrills of snowmobiling are provided at the racetrack. County fairgrounds, unused in past winters, are coming to life for race events. The challenges range from local to statewide competition, and even international events creating race circuits with purses ranging up to $25,000 in cash prizes. The gals are in the act too, when they take to the snowy trails in the Powder Puff Derby. Hubbies stand by to give last minute advice. Uh, this race, claimed to be the world's first powder puff derby, was held in the city of Merrill, Wisconsin in 1969. It started as a local promotion, has become an annual event, and even the nuns from the local convent took part in the race. Uh, there's a race to be run, but still time out to fix the hair. Now, let's wait for the green flag gals. And now they're on. And the competition starts. Gradually, they pick up speed. A lap down, and the pace begins to quicken. The girls showing that they have the capabilities and the courage it takes to ride the outside of the banks. Here is steep and hard to maneuver. Now, 
there will be no gossip on the racetrack. Now the girls come off the oval and into the obstacle course, a demanding test for machine and the person driving it. Constant turns are tough enough for the men to negotiate, as the steering skis of a snowmobile have a tendency to slide, even when turning the handlebars, unless the weight of your body is with the turn and there's a bank to push the entire machine into the turn. The elapsed time on the course is what counts here. Obstacle racing is a test of speed as well as skill. Unlike the oval, it's a series of turns and obstructions things that a driver must learn to cope with. Leaning and thinking and muscle power. A hard chore for most men. Here the women seem to be holding their own. This powder puff is really what started it all. And it's growing by leaps and bounds and more and more women who use the machine for fun and daily chores are determined to prove that they can hold their own on the racetrack too. But the biggest race of them all is the Eagle River World's Championship Derby. Thousands converge on this small northern community, which grows from a population of less than 2,000 people to well over 40,000 during the three-day event, for which Eagle River claims the title of the snowmobile capital of the world. Here one finds it truly is a family spectator sport, with no generation gap. And from the looks of it, most of them plan a long stay. From distant states, enthusiasts pile in to see this granddaddy of them all. Factory teams representing all the major snowmobile manufacturers and independent drivers compete for over $20,000 in cash prizes. But most important of all, the World Championship Trophy. Here, drivers ready their machines for the high bank oval. Staging most of the action are the qualifying events. Other events include the seven and a half mile speed obstacle course. And drag racing on the straightaway where sheer bursts of speed count. In many cases, the machines are souped up and roared up to set a new world's record in snowmobile speed. is on the oval, from stock machines to modified. Spectators here get a real chance at some real action. Now the start of one of those races. The world's finest drivers competing for the world's title.
actually use the board on the fence to get a better bite to come down and get a better position. Well over 40,000 fans watch this granddaddy of them all, as many call it. On the straightaway of the Oval, they reach speeds of 80 to 85 miles an hour. Man and machine in a challenge of skill, strength, and speed. But off the track, as well as on it, there's much more to see. Again, for the entire family that likes the cold outdoors and snowmobiling. There are interesting faces. attractions include things to come in the future. The snow pony, claimed to reach speeds of up to 140 miles an hour. Beauty Queens. Celebrities. And celebrations. There are rewards. Thousands of happy faces and happy people. Snowmobiling, like other forms of racing, is a true challenge and test of man and machine, and a form of hero worship as well. The fans are basically looking for their machine. It's surprising to find how many machines are sold on the basis of which brand wins the race. There's been a great concern for safety on the tracks, for the spectator as well as the driver. Many of the early racetracks made for snowmobiling had no fencing or protection for the spectator. And some of the wire mesh fences would not hold back a machine speeding at over 60 miles an hour. In automobile and other forms of racing, the drivers have some form of protection. But in snowmobile racing, he is quite exposed to all the dangers and the sharp skis of another machine.
Here, a crash. The driver is off the machine, helpless as the skis of another racer hit and drag him along the track. This particular driver was seriously injured. Some criticize snowmobiling for its supposed lack of safety and concern. But many associations connected with the sport are making great efforts to streamline standards, safety, and the track. As in all other sports, the race goes on. Drivers continue to battle for positions as the factory representatives sponsoring the various company teams wait for their driver to emerge, hopefully, as the winner. Oddly enough, in this, the world's championship race, the pros and the amateurs compete in the same event, unlike other sports. Fundamentally, there are three classes of drivers, beginning with the individual who's out for fun, personal recognition, and the extra dollar. Another group is comprised of drivers from distributors and dealers, a family member or employee whose interest is a taste for glory combined with the possibility of attracting potential buyers for their brand of machine. The third class, of course, and head of the list, is the skilled factory paid or subsidized team drivers who are backed by skilled mechanics and a truckload of machines and spare parts. They're held bent for action, glory, and the money. In many cases, the drivers are paid quite handsomely to race for the factory and work year-round for the same firm testing the machines. Here they come off that turn. Two machines brushing together. Again, they actually hit the boards to propel themselves back into the field or to the lower side of the track, hopefully picking up two or three positions at the same time. The three-day Eagle River event ends with the awarding of the world's championship trophy. And for the lucky one, the attention of everybody while in the winner's circle. The racing here may be over for another year, but there are still places to go on the racing circuit, and there will be more trophies, more money, and more glory for these snowmobilers. was thought to be a winter sport has proven its worth in the summertime as well, when they hit the turf and the dust flies. This isn't January, it's the 4th of July, and the drivers get ready for summertime snowmobile racing. The pit activity is as hectic as during the winter months. The snow is gone, but the spectators are here in full force. Running the machines on the wood chips is as interesting as running them on the snow. The tracks are groomed, and a little water holds the dust down. The hoods are removed from the machines to prevent overheating. Competition is as keen as in the winter, although these are amateur races, in this case, the junior class.
The prizes are less as they are local events, but the excitement is there and so is the speed of the machines. Instead of snow banks, hay bales line the bank of the oval. It's a little harder to maneuver the machines for a sharp turn, so a sloping bank must be provided to prevent the machines from sliding off the track. Snowmobiles on the go. Rigorous. Cold trails. A new challenge for man. Safaris. Expeditions. Races. Again, man has to prove it can be done in a different way. On snowmobiles. Snowmobiles are fun, exciting. And useful for quick getaways, in movies that is. Snowmobile trails are everywhere, and so are the motorized sleighs.
In today's world of leisure time activity and the search for escape by thousands of fun-loving people, snowmobiles, it seems, are here to stay. And you don't have to go too far to hear the roar of snowmobiles. 